Hi, I'm Jay McClellan, and today I'm going to make a portable wood-fired pizza oven. This is going to be really easy to make. It's going to be inexpensive, light enough and small enough that you can pack it up and carry it in a backpack, and hopefully it'll make really good pizza. I'm going to build it from a pair of these stainless steel warming pans. These are readily available. Uh, you can get them just about anywhere for restaurant supplies. If you're lucky, you can uh, possibly find these used from a restaurant. Uh, if they're a little bent, uh, a little dinged up, it won't really matter. I got these on Amazon, uh, two for about 28 bucks. So that's the most expensive part of my pizza oven. The two and a half inch deep pan then when I use two of them is going to give me a five inch high internal chamber to the oven, which I think is going to be just about right. On the inside, I've got a 10 inch diameter pizza stone. It's one that I had. You can get these for under 20 bucks. And this is a fairly thin one. The thinner the stone, the less heat it's going to retain. And that may be a bad thing because it's not going to retain as much uh, heat to cook the pizza from the bottom when I put the pizza on it. But on the good side, it's lighter to carry, it's cheaper, and it heats up faster. So there are trade-offs. Uh, this one is a little over a quarter inch thick, and that's, that's pretty thin. That's about as thin as they get. And a thicker one would probably work well. Also, just a little different balance of the trade-offs. Now, to make the oven work, I'm going to cut a hole right about here in the bottom of the oven. And unlike most pizza ovens uh, that are wood-fired, this, this one isn't actually going to have a fire inside it. It's going to have a hole, and I'm going to sort of set it up next to or on top of a campfire and let the fire come up through that hole and through the chamber of the oven. So I haven't seen this design before. I just made it up, but uh, it's a way to get the oven smaller and lighter weight because I don't have to build a complete firebox and a way to, to stoke the fire inside the oven. It's going to be set up on legs, which is why I have it propped up on a can at the moment. The legs I'm just going to make from some threaded rod. I've got 5 16 inch threaded rod with a couple of wing nuts that'll let me adjust the height of the oven. And then on the bottom, I just have a couple of nuts and a washer so that it won't sink down into the ground. So when I cut the hole out of the bottom, I'm not going to remove the entire uh, area. I'm going to leave a tab about two and a half inches wide and bend it upward. So there'll be kind of a baffle here so that when the flames come up through the hole, they're not going to hit the pizza directly. They'll have to come up above that and wash over the top. And that should help a little bit to keep the temperature a little more even. In order to drill the holes for the legs, I've got the two halves of my oven clamped together with these clamps. Just to hold them in place, I got them all lined up, and so I'm going to drill a 5 16 inch hole in each corner. I want to make sure that the wing nuts are going to clear everything so that when my legs are, are tight, tightened down by these wing nuts, I can snug them up and adjust the height that way. So I've got a fair amount of space, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball where the holes go, but about in the middle of this flange looks about right. I'll start with a spring-loaded center punch, get it right in the right spot. That'll give me a little starter for my drill bit. Next I'll drill a small pilot hole. Then I'll follow that up with a 5 16 inch drill bit. And I'll repeat that for the other three corners. I'll use a countersink to just lightly deburr all of the holes. Now I'm going to mark out the lines of where I'm going to cut. And I'm going to make this the bottom of the oven, so I've got it sitting upside down. And the pizza stone will be sitting inside then on the bottom. I don't want the pizza stone to be all the way to the front of the oven because it's going to be cooler up at the front where, uh, where the smoke and, and heat is coming out. So I want it set back a little bit, but not back too far because it'll make it hard to turn the pizza. So I've got it set about an inch and a half back from the front wall of the oven. I think that just looks about right. I don't want to go beyond the flat portion of the bottom because that curved edge helps uh, give strength to the structure. So I'm just going to cut on the flat part, plus it'll be a lot easier to cut. And I'm going to make a line going straight across now, but this is not going to be a cut line. It's going to be a fold line. Like that. So that's where the metal's going to fold. And then I want it to come up about two and a half inches. So I'll measure that two and a half up. 
And that's where I'm going to cut across. So those are my cut lines. I'm going to cut around here like this, across like that, and then I'll fold this into the oven to become a flap, to uh, a, a flange to deflect the flames so they don't hit the pizza directly. On the front part of the oven, I need to cut an opening. That's where the pizza's going in and smoke is coming out. Both top and bottom, I actually want to start my cut down here and leave this little curved ridge to help strengthen the oven. So that's my cut line, more or less. I'm going to kind of freehand it. That'll give me a pretty good guide. I'll do that on both the top and bottom pieces. Now that I've got all my cuts marked out, I've come outside so I can use an angle grinder, and I'm going to use this metal cutting blade, uh, this cutoff blade, to make the cuts, and then I'm going to use a uh, metal uh, grinding blade to clean up the edges. The angle grinder did a pretty good job of cleaning up the large burrs from where the metal was cut, but there's still some small burrs around the edge. And so to clean those up, I'm going to use a rotary tool. So I went over all of the edges and deburred them so I've got no sharp burrs on the edges. And once I did that, I went through and cleaned the whole thing really well so that I won't get any bits of metal into the food. So now I'm ready to put it together and try it out. Well, there we have it all assembled. I've got the nuts tightened down. It's a little wobbly, but not too bad and should work just fine. And my opening in the front is wide enough that I can slide the pizza stone in after I have it assembled, so I don't have to put that in first. And uh, that's pretty much it. For my first test of the pizza oven, I just uh, built a small fire and just set the oven over the fire so that it would come up through the opening in the bottom. And it worked pretty well. I, I was able to get a pretty good curtain of flame kind of coming up through the oven and washing over the top, but there was a little bit of a breeze and at times the uh, the flames didn't really come up through the oven very well. They kind of blew off to the side. It wasn't a lot of wind, but it was enough. So I was able to get the oven up to about 650 degrees measured uh, with an infrared thermometer on the pizza stone. And that's pretty good. Uh, it made a really nice pizza. I'm, you know, I, I can't say that it didn't work, but I think I can do better. And I want to make a change so that the flames are channeled up uh, through the oven better. Now, I could make an entire firebox for this. I could build like a little rocket stove to sit under here, but I want to keep it really simple so it's easy for people to build one of these, and I want to keep it lightweight. So I'm going to use a simpler approach and just make some baffles to go underneath to kind of block the wind and guide the flames up through the oven. I cut some pieces of stainless steel sheet. I got this at a scrap yard, so it's a little grungy but uh, it'll work fine for this uh, and won't matter once it's in the fire. But uh, use stainless. You wouldn't want to use aluminum in any part of this because it will melt and you absolutely would not want to use uh, galvanized steel because the heat of the flames can vaporize the zinc coating on galvanized steel and uh, you could end up depositing metal onto your food. So uh, stainless is the way to go. So I cut these pieces 
so that they'll hang down about seven inches. I'm going to leave the oven about eight inches up like it was. I think that height works pretty well in general uh, if I can get the flames to go up through it a little more consistently. So here's the bottom of my oven sitting upside down and I want the flaps to sit kind of like this as they're hanging. Again, this is upside down and I want to wire them on at the edges so that uh, so that they'll hang down but they'll fold up for storage. I drilled holes in the pan and matching holes in the stainless steel flaps and I cut some little lengths of stainless steel wire that I can just pass through the holes like that and twist on the other side. I wired on the three flaps and then because they basically make hinges I can fold them up like that for storage. Here you can see how my new fire flaps hang down to make kind of a box for the fire. It's open at these edges. I don't think that's going to matter much, but I think it's going to do a much better job of getting the fire up into the oven and make it much less affected by wind. To pack up the oven for travel, I just lay the bottom of the oven uh, upside down like this and fold these flaps down flat and then take the pizza stone inside a plastic bag to keep it clean, lay it on top like that. The pizza stone is actually going to ride better in between the two layers so it's not rattling around. And then I can take the top half of the oven and set it on like that to make a nice compact package. Flip it over and just stow the legs inside. Then for travel, to keep everything clean, I'll stow it inside an old pillowcase and uh, it slips in easily and that way the inside of my pack won't get all messy or the inside of my car, wherever I'm carrying it, won't get all uh, dirty because it does build up some soot inside. So this is my entire pizza oven. It uh, collapses down into this pretty compact package that'll uh, slide inside a backpack. I would not take this on a long backpacking trip, but it is light enough at seven and a half pounds to take on a day hike, for example. And so I can carry it out in the woods or into some beautiful location and have a pizza party. Well, time to try it out. Uh, today's gonna be a bit of a challenge. The wind is gusty today. It's calm right at the moment, but it keeps coming up in gusts and it's blowing in different directions. So I've got it faced so that uh, it's in the direction where most of the time the wind is coming this this way and should carry the flames through the oven, but I'm getting gusts from other directions too. So it'll be a good test of these, uh, these fire baffles that I set up. So let's light it up and try it out. For fuel, I've got a stack of very dry hardwood sticks that I've broken into fairly short lengths. And I've got it set up so I can just feed them into uh, the fire on the end of the oven. And I think this will be enough, uh, hopefully more than enough, for a couple of pizzas. But I wanted to make sure I had plenty of wood. Even with noticeable wind, the baffles seem to be working pretty well. And it's channeling the flame up through the oven pretty well. Much better than before. Okay, the pizza stone's up to about 650 to 700 degrees, so in we go. There we are, about 60 seconds. Actually looks just about right. That's a nice looking pizza after 60 seconds. I right, turned it around, I'm going to give it a little more on the other side. There we are, wood-fired pizza. Okay, here's pizza number two. You can see the parchment around the edges burned a little bit, which is fine. But uh, the pizza will come right off the parchment and it's gonna be fantastic. Well, I hope you enjoyed my pizza oven build. Uh, I think it came out fantastic. It's uh, maybe a little bit a little bit dark on the edges here and there. Really first time using it in that mode, so it's gonna take a little practice, but I love how I got a nice uh, wood-fired oven char effect on the top, and uh, it's, it's uh, nicely browned on the bottom. So I think we'll call that a success, and I uh, hope you'll try making one of your own.
Mm. That's good pizza. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>